Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Adventure Built. My name is Kelly. I'm Trevor. And we're back in the shop for another install. Rook is getting some cool new stuff. It's all of this going on that. Stay tuned. Welcome back everybody. So what is this and why is it being put on there? Uh, this is a lot of stuff. This is an entire roof rack for my camper shell. It is the bars, the feet, the crossbars. It's pretty much everything. Why do you need crossbars and a roof rack? So the main reason for having the roof rack on my camper shell is going to be for my rooftop tent. There's also some other accessories we're putting on at some point, maybe an awning or a road shower if I can swing it at some point. But for right now, the rooftop tent is the main thing going on here. And just by chance, I happen to have a Yakima rooftop tent going along with all of my Yakima rooftop tent rack accessories. Hashtag not sponsored. Mm, not at all. This was actually <laughs> quite a uh, pretty penny. Lots of moolah. Yeah, so let me tell you step by step what we're gonna do today. So I've got a large section of matte black vinyl uh, that is gonna cover the top of the camper shell. It's gonna be put on there for two reasons. One is gonna be protection. Inevitably, whenever I'm working on the rack, I drop stuff on the camper shell and I end up getting little scratches and dings and dents. The vinyl will help protect the paint from any kind of chips. Another is my camper shell does not match my truck. My truck is cement gray, my camper shell is a dark gray. So this will just make the color not stand out so much. Yeah. In the right lighting, it looks the same, but it's not. It's weird, it's kind of crazy. Yeah, it's optically yeah. challenging. It's an illusion. It's a straight <laughs> illusion. It's magic. magic. It's magic. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough talk. Step one, putting on the vinyl wrap, which is gonna be a challenge all in itself. Never done it. Never done it. We're gonna do it right now. Do it. So this is me and Trevor's first time at doing a wrap. It's obviously not gonna come out perfect. This is a protective coat on the roof, not gonna be seen. Not really all that concerned about it. I just want some protection. So we're gonna pull this out. We're basically going to start on one end, kind of smooth it out as we go and just see how it comes out. I think it'll be okay. definitely not going on easy. There's a lot of bubbles and a couple creases in here. Like I said, this is for more for protection than it is for looks. It's gonna be on the roof with a rack over it. However, I still want it to look good. Obviously this costs money and we don't want to half-ass it. So we are trying to get them out. We might go back and pop these and try to get them out and then smooth them out the best we can. Right now we're just cruising on. It's not super difficult, but it definitely is a technique to it that we have not learned yet, obviously. We've got the general wrap done. Now we're going through and just fixing all the edges. It looks okay, it's not perfect. It's our first time and we're kind of rushing through it because it is the roof. If this was a door panel or another body panel, we definitely would have taken more of our time and probably tossed this whole thing because apparently once you crease it, when you're putting it down, it's creased forever. There's really no way that I've seen we've been able to get it out. So if you know any tricks, comment below and let me know because uh, we're definitely gonna be wrapping more of this camper shell. 
Definitely more. Definitely, definitely more. Gotta go to Kmart. <laughs> wrap came out okay. It's not perfect, like I said, protection. Now we're trying to map out where these bars are gonna go. These are the bars that actually go onto the camper shell itself. There's a specific name for it, I don't remember what it is, but I will put it right below. And all of these items will be in the description. What we did was I measured four inches off of the window inboard, and now we're just laying them out parallel to each other. There's not, it doesn't have to be any specific um, dimension. I just already have a pre-existing rack and I know the further out to the sides you get, the more the load will be distributed to the sides and not the middle. So that's the route we're taking. Now we're just going to make them centered on the cab and start drilling holes. We initially marked out three inches from the front to center them uh, forward and backwards. And three inches was a little bit too much. It, they seem to be a little bit further back. So we're doing two and a half inches. After you get them where you want them, take a step back and make sure it looks good. If it doesn't look good to your eye on the ground, it's probably not gonna look good up in the air. The directions call for you to sink the first two holes and then skip every other hole after that. But the name of the game here is to make sure that these don't move and they stay stable. You wanna make sure that you don't get a big wobble in it. Then when you go to do your rack sliding later on, if you move those bars back and forth on the feet, they're just not gonna move. So make sure they're parallel at all cost. Right now, Trevor's gonna hold down the rail and I'm gonna go through and mark the holes we're gonna drill. Then we'll pull it off, drill the pilots, and then drill the regulars, and there's a whole silicone washer process we have to do. But first, let's get these holes marked. It's super important that these don't move when marking them. Make sure you have a good friend to hold down the track so it doesn't move when you mark it. Or a brother. <laughs> And we're pre-drilling all the holes with a quarter inch drill bit. One eighth. We're gonna pre-drill all the holes with a eighth inch drill bit. Thank you, brother. The next step is to drill out the pilot holes with your quarter inch drill bit to get the bolts through. Clean up after yourself. We've got the holes drilled. We've got everything cleaned up. Now it's time to install the tracks. The process is pretty simple. Basically, we're gonna take the supplied Loctite and we're going to put a, a generous amount on each hole. You take one of these white washers and you place it over the hole on the silicone. Then when you have all the holes done, you place the track over all the holes with the silicone and the little white washers already there. Once you have that done, you take a screw and one of these black washers and feed it through the hole. And then you have someone underneath holding the knobs to hold the tracks in place. Now the silicone's down White washers, they just go over the hole in the silicone. And I'm using a glove so I don't get black RTV all over my hands. Now that the RTV is down, the white washers are down, the track just goes right over the washers. You can see the groove in the track where the washers will still sit flush. The track won't be raised up even though these little washers are underneath it. Then it's bolt, black washer, and then in the hole. 
before you put the end screws in, make sure you put the end feet in. These end feet here actually go into the ends and then the bolt goes through the hole to secure them. Congratulations, you've already installed your tracks. How fast was that? It actually wasn't too bad. It was kind of a pain in the butt. On this side over here, the bolts were actually short, so I had to run to Home Depot and get longer bolts. I ended up with one and three quarter inch uh, 10 30 second bolts. Um, just how it rolls. Uh, for some reason, the uh, middle of this camper shell is thicker and the outsides are thinner. And the way that the thickness was situated in it wasn't even, so it ended up being thicker on that side than this side. Is what it is. Next step. So these little guys are called the landing pads. Now these are what attach to those little base plate nuts that we put inside the track. And they go on like so. And all this does is your feet attach to these. Pretty straightforward, you just screw them in. Just like so. And tighten everything up with five millimeter Allen key. And just keep everything loose so it can slide on the track. When I'm putting these feet on, all I'm doing is sliding the bracket over, build my screw, screw, washer, spacer. Now I have two. All I'm doing is moving the spacer over by hand until I can see it, and then I drop the bolt onto it and just give it a couple turns to snug it down. And on this one, I take my Allen key and I'm just pushing it over so that I can see the hole dropping it in. And I want my bars 35 inches apart. That's what they are in my other truck, which is basically the width of all my racks and my rooftop tent. And I'm just gonna snug them down so they don't move around too much. This part confused me. I just figured it out. So let me show you guys what happened. These are the Skyline Towers. Now these insert into the landing pads that we just installed on the camper shell. You can see how this depresses and then you unlock it and it pushes out and it fits into that little cleat that's on the landing pad. I couldn't quite figure out exactly where this part was. So this is the part on the rack that actually the bar goes across and locks in here. And I couldn't figure out there's no actual clamp or anything to actually hold onto the bar. Reading the instructions, it's not super, super clear where these are at. They just show you what you do with them when you get them. Well, they're actually, they're in with the bars. These four middle pieces here are actually what go to here. It's a little confusing, I know. One piece in one box, another piece in another box, but yeah, they're in the big box with the bars. Step one of assembling this is to open this up. Now, in order to open this up, you have to ensure that this portion here is in line. If it's crossways, this won't open, so you gotta twist it until that's in line. And then come over here, pinch the sides that say Yakima on it, and pull it open. And that will expose that nut right there. And what you have to do is you have to loosen this nut right here until on the bottom side, you can see this Allen head. With this portion here not exposed, you cannot get this in here to tighten down this nut here. So first thing you have to do is loosen this bolt here that is inside. And as you're loosening, see how you can start seeing that. Now we can see the head of this Allen right here. And now we can get our screwdriver in there. And by the way, this is a Torx Allen head that came with the kit. Now what we're gonna do is, this is the piece that came with the bars. We're going to flip it over. Now this is with the Yakima facing down. And all you're going to do is take this so these little pinchy handles are facing up. You're gonna insert it in here and you're gonna press down till it clicks. Now that you have the click, you take this tower looking thing, and you insert it upside down and hold it there with your hand. Go to this side. Now we're going to unscrew this a little bit more to lower that plate. And now we're going to tighten this Allen head in order to get this. And all we're doing is tightening this big block into place. So tighten this all the way down, hold it firmly and keep tightening. And you'll hear that this is a Torx head, so it clicks. It is now torqued down to the proper spec. Now this is still loose in here, and you want this to be loose, the bars will slide onto this, this big block right here. And you can see with this up, that's how it locks into the landing pad. Look at these aerodynamic beauties. I've only ever had round or square bars on my racks. 
So I'm pretty excited about finally getting some aerodynamic bars. You can see on the wrap, it tells you which way faces front. The front part is the more bulbous side as aerodynamics works. First things first, we have to remove this bottom rubber piece. We're going to align the bottom of the Skyline Tower into the landing pad. If you insert it, it's a tight fit, but it goes right in. And then all we're gonna do is feed the bar through and it pulls right through. Now we're gonna go do the other side and then we'll tighten everything down. Once you have the bars even left and right and where you want them front and back, all you have to do is go down and tighten down the two bolts that attach the landing pad to the track itself. And it's just on either side of the bar. You can look down and you can see the holes. Now you wanna secure the arrow bar to the Skyline Tower and you're gonna need your Torx bit again. And all you're gonna do is if you look straight down underneath the bar, there is a big Allen head that fits this Torx screw and just start spinning. And this will tighten this down. And that's it. And now that it's tight, all you're gonna do is take this and close that up. All right guys, that wraps up this build. The camper shell looks amazing. Let me know what you guys think. Camper shells or bed racks? I prefer the camper shell. This is my second one on my second Tacoma. And I have to admit, I love the functionality of it. I can seal it up. I can put things back there. I don't have to worry about dirt and dust and grime and water getting things all dirty and nasty back there. I like the functionality and usability and portability of the camper shell myself. I know a lot of people prefer the cab racks. That's just not me because I like to put things back there and keep it clean. But let me know what you guys think. Let me know your pros and cons. Maybe you can change my mind. I don't know. We'll see. But good night. Trevor already left. He had to get home. Be sure to like. Be sure to subscribe. Follow us on IG. We'll see you guys next time. Did you like it or no? Yeah. Do you think we can do better? Probably not. I think we can do a lot. <laughs> But, or, then I, but then I wouldn't be here and you wouldn't be here. Yeah. There'd be two actresses. <laughs> yeah. Install with Rook. No. On Rook. It's not with Rook. Rook's not helping out. Rook not doing shit. Rook's just lazy. sitting there like a lazy ass taco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> two words right. in. Stumble. <laughs> Beastie boys be rapping, yo! That's not going in the video. <laughs> Did you say White Walkers? White Walkers. Winter is coming. <laughs>